Alberta was one of the first to really study Vitruvius's essays on architecture. Now Vitruvius is a Roman who had written essays on architecture, getting at the idea of proportion, etc. In fact, that's where we get the idea of Vitruvian man from when we get to Leonardo. But at the time, Vitruvius had only just been rediscovered, turning up again in Western Europe. Now, Alberte believed in the absolute uselessness of the column, instead insisting on the use of a pier to create structural support. And we're going to see this, for example, at Santa Maria Novella, which this is now the third time that we've come across this church. First, to look at the inside, then Masaccio's Holy Trinity, of course, is painted in Santa Maria Novella, and now looking at the facade. Now, commissioned by the Roncelli family, Alberti was asked to add a facade for the 13th century church of Santa Maria Novella. This is one of the major churches of Florence. It's very important. It's also a Dominican monastery, the church for a Dominican monastery. And what he's going to do is he designs a small pseudo-classical pediment capped temple front for the upper half. And he will support it with a pilaster framed arcade that incorporates the six tombs and three doorways that were already in the Gothic structure. He did, however, apply Renaissance principles throughout. For example, height and width are, in fact, equal, even though it's not quite equal for the church. But, of course, you can make those adjustments for a facade. No one sees the church that's behind it. Areas are going to be defined and then related by numerical ratios. For example, the upper facade is exactly one-fourth the size of the entire square. So if you imagine this is one giant square. The main cornice dividing divides the height, creating a ratio of two for one from the lower facade to the upper facade. Now, Alberti's interest in ratio comes from a study of the Romans, again, Vitruvius, and in turn, the Greeks, who were the first to devise the use of perfect proportions to create temples of divine proportion, such as temples that were in roughly a 2 to 1 ratio or 1.618 to 1, known as the golden ratio, which is the ratio that measures not only the human body, but really much of nature. And Alberti took a Gothic structure, Santa Maria Novella, and fit it into a classical understanding, providing a sense of calm order. He also was the first to make use of scroll work to tie levels together, which we see here in the corners. That scroll work is way ahead of its time. It would become prominent for the next 250 years or more. The really remarkable thing is the way he's working around incorporating these various elements. Like I said, the three doors that are already there, the six tombs, which you see, for example, here and so forth, the asymmetry of the church. The church behind it is asymmetrical uh, in some ways because of the Dominican monastery off to one side. So what he's done is really remarkable and gives us an architectural sense of what they're looking at as key to understanding proportion and ratios in the Renaissance, this rebirth of classical ratios, 2 to 1, 1 1.618 to 1. And the idea that the architecture of a church should be as perfect as possible, after all, it is the house of God, much like the Greeks and the Romans built temples to be as perfect as possible, reflecting in some cases human proportions, 1.618 to 1, because that created a perfect offering for the Greeks. These temples are offerings to the gods, not houses for the gods. But we're seeing that translated into Christianity here. This is really what humanism is about, taking ancient classic knowledge and reconciling it with 15th century realities of the church, of religion, of society and creating something like this.